Hello folks, welcome to the Ocean State Cuisine, where in today's video, I got a special treat for you folks. We're going to be covering a fantastic place that's been in business since the end of the 1600s. Rhode Island was, or is, one of the first states that was ever founded in the United States. There's a lot of history locked in the state of Rhode Island, and one of it is being, this is actually where John F. Kennedy got married to his wife. It was one of the first churches ever opened in the United States, located in Newport, Rhode Island. But in today's video, we're going to be focusing strictly on the company called Kenyans. Kenyans is, and still operates today, one of the favorite grist mills in the United States. But instead of me blabbing along, I'm going to be showing you guys segments of videos that's going to cover the history, how they go about making this meal, and also the recipe for making Johnny Cakes. Johnny Cakes is a staple food of Rhode Island. And Kenyon's was the starter of this great dish. Now, I will be providing links in the description panel of today's video and also in the comments section. One is going to be Amazon and the other one is going to be Kenyon's Grist Mill website themselves where you could go and order these fantastic products. They even manufacture the grain used to make what we call clam cakes, which is probably one of Rhode Island's favorite staple foods. Now, some of the videos I'm going to be showing you guys in today's video is not quite up to par when it comes to quality of today's standards. These have been shot years ago. So with all that being said, let's jump in and give Kenyon's Grist Mill in Rhode Island, West Kingston, a look. Welcome back to the Roadshow. It's harvest time in Rhode Island, and what many people don't know is that there is still an operating grist mill right here in the Ocean State. T.J. Del Santo headed out to the mill to see what it's all about. It's harvest time, and you can bring home the harvest from Kenyon's Grist Mill just like thousands have done since the early 1900s. Here in West Kingston, they still stone grind various grains, yellow, white, red, and blue corn, in addition to wheat, rye, and oats. Once ground, various mixes are made, including pancake, clam cake, and Rhode Island's own Johnny Cake mix. The mill is located in this building, built in 1886, although the mill has been around since the 1600s. The mill itself is the original set of stones. Paul Drum III is the current owner. The Kenyon Mill was named after C.D. Kenyon, who purchased the property in 1909. Who was a uh, uh, longtime owner, and uh, he was the first person to put a put the cornmeal into a branded box and it became Kenyon's at that point and stayed that way. The Kenyon family installed electric motors in the 30s, but the Queens River once powered the turbines to spin the stone. It's, a, it's an old world uh, single pass stone grinding process. You don't find it everywhere today. Drum said this process provides exceptional texture and quality not found in steel ground flowers. In addition, vital natural nutrition is preserved, which is what health conscious customers want. The process starts when grain is dropped into the hopper and falls between two giant stones. They can grind 250 to 300 pounds per hour and produce this high quality meal and flour. We also do a number of private label things. We uh, service Dina DeLuca and William Sonoma. But locals can buy their products at their recently updated mill store. We have a variety of products, uh, but obviously all of our meals and flours and mixes and so forth, along with uh, a nice mix of all locally made products as well. We have a lot of local artisans that can sign goods into the shop, so it gives people an opportunity to showcase the products. In Rhode Island, the Leaf Peepers come to the Kenyon Cornmeal Company to catch a glimpse of the picturesque setting of a true New England original, the Johnny Cake. Island. The you got it. Is the best. <laughs> Rhode Island is the smallest state in the country, but it's big on beauty. Not far from the mansions of Newport and the quaint town of Narragansett, 
leaf peepers find themselves soaking in the scenery. Uh, it's just a sleepy little village, and uh, we just do our thing. We come in and, uh, as I want to say, it's the same old grind, which is pun definitely intended. The same old grind is here at the Kenyan Cornmeal Company. Small in size, but big in flavor, these packages of yellow and white cornmeal, as well as the other mixes, have been made at Kenyon's grist mill since 1886. Uh, we don't want a chemical compound for a recipe. We want something that's, that's simple and basic. Uh, grandma's uh, favorite recipe that we've sort of taken and made just a little bit easier so that all you have to add is egg and oil and water, just some basic ingredients that most people have at home. Kenyon's is known for its milling process, using two granite millstones to finally grind the grain. The millstones are more than 100 years old, and because they have an incredibly flat surface, they can achieve a fine shave from the grain. All the, the mills that you find down south, the southern corn meals, uh, it produces more of a granular ground meal. It's different. It, it feels different in your hand. There's no uh, digital readouts or anything there. Totally sensory. You use your eyes, your ears, your sense of smell, and your sense of touch are so critical because you, you have to maintain a proper consistency. And let's not forget a sense of taste. Kenyon's products taste as good as they look and require only a few add-ins. The signature item is the Johnny Cake Mix, the recipe for which dates back to the Native Americans who used eight-inch, eight-row flint corn to make what has become a Rhode Island tradition. I'm Dick Donnelly, I'm a Rhode Islander, and I make Rhode Island Johnny Cakes. Another tradition of sorts is this Johnny Cake expert, who teaches people how to make Johnny Cakes using Kenyon's mixes. The colonists came over and found the Indians eating ground corn mixed with a little water from the streams. And the colonists wanted some of these little, this gruel to travel. So they dried it out on a griddle and brought it with them when they went on their journey. And they took these little cakes on their journey and it was called a journey cake. And then the R's got dropped in Massachusetts and Rhode Island and became Johnny. And this is the Johnny cake. The batter is Kenyon's Johnny cake mix, dry milk, sugar, salt, and a pinch of nutmeg mixed with boiling notice, hot water for a thick batter. When I put that down and tap it, watch when I pull up the spoon, I'm pulling up some of the batter off the griddle. If the batter is the right consistency, that little void will appear when I turn it over. We tap them down. A lot of people compare Johnny Cakes to pancakes, but Dick is quick to set them straight. There are three ingredients that you'll find in a pancake. One is egg, one is wheat flour, and another is leavening. The three ingredients that are left out of a Johnny Cake is egg, wheat flour, and Leavening. Dick cooks them about seven minutes each side. Plain Johnny cakes are often served with whipped butter that's been mixed with syrup beforehand to avoid spilling on the plate. He tops his chocolate Johnny cakes with a non-parel and a dollop of corn muffin mix. Like a chocolate sandwich. See how those Johnny cakes are getting brown around the edges? I don't want to get them much browner than that. For me? Yes. I hope you like chocolate. <laughs> Mm. See how the chocolate is melted on the inside? It's just perfect. They're also good as a substitute for potatoes. Before we were done with the many variations of the Johnny Cake, Donnelly insisted on showing us one of his all-time favorites. It's a Southwestern Johnny Cake using the corn muffin mix, hot salsa, and orange soda. And I put a corn chip on the top. The flatter ones are better. And then when I turn this over, the corn chip will be on the griddle, and it won't continue to cook. These work great as an appetizer or side item for a south of the side item for a south of the border meal. Leaf peepers who stop at Kenyon's often find themselves gazing at the little waterfall that used to power the mill. A quaint gift shop is just across the street. Oh, I'm from California, so this is something new. Yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt where the Kenyans of the future will be, firmly rooted in its history. 
I think that our future lies in, in trying to really take care of what we have. Uh, we have a, a wonderful uh, location here. We have a wonderful mill. It's a slice of history. Isn't it amazing what you can make with one little cornmeal cake? The Drum family also makes boxed mixes for brown breads, and you can bake them in tin cans. I'm going to oil the tops of them before I turn them over. You leave them on until they're brown around the edges, and then you leave them a little bit longer. They're not ready to turn over until they're dark brown around the edges, really dark. They will not burn. Okay. Can I put syrup mixed in with the whipped butter? And it stays on the cake. I've been making it for a long time. This is 76 years that I've been making Johnny Cakes. Rhode Island Johnny Cakes. And I've made them on a number of uh, network shows. I've made them for Martha Stewart. Made them for on the Food Network. And I give classes in schools to train the kids and the, and the teachers how to make them. And um, I make them in different ways. The person who makes Johnny Cakes makes them the way they like to eat them. Everybody doesn't have to make them exactly the same way. These are not quite right. Now, if these were a pancake, they would probably be burned by now. But if you look at these, you notice there's a little peak on the top of each one. When I tap the spoon down to get the batter off the spoon, that last thing I do is to pick up the Johnny Cake and the spoon, and the, some of the batter comes with it. And you'll see that when I turn it over, there's a hole. Because of that pull up of the spoon, there's a little hole on the underside, and that's called a smile. White stone ground cornmeal. A little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and I like to put in a, a little bit of dry milk. You get a faster crust. It's maple butter, so it's maple in here. Do you like to buy it? You order a plain? Now, 
the syrup has been put into the butter. Is that like whipped into it. It's whipped butter. So when it's put on a Johnny cake, it stays on the cake and doesn't run all over the plate. They are Rhode Island Johnny cakes. There are 28 different kinds up and down the coast. I'm putting cracked pepper on them for one reason. That's the way I like them. <laughs> if you don't like it that way, buy a bag and go home and make your own. I think you'll like it. Use them with your fingers and keep the butter side up all the way to your mouth. Just a little bit, but go ahead and take it. Pepper and, and butter. Take one for a sample, use your fingers. Thank you. Oh, that's good. What makes it even better is you got it for nothing. <laughs> know that the best way to mill grain while preserving its nutrient content is to grind it between two big stones. All these flowers in front of me were stone ground by Kenyon's Grist Mill. We visited Kenyon's to learn how they grind grain the old-fashioned way, between stones. On the banks of the Queens River in South Kingston, Rhode Island, sits an old grist mill. It was built in the late 19th century, but milling on this site dates back to 1711. Originally powered by water, the mill switched to electricity in the late 1930s. The mill is named for C.D. Kenyon, who purchased the business in 1909 and was the first miller here to package the cornmeal in small boxes for individual consumers. Today, Kenyon's owner, Paul Drum, ships thousands of little bags of cornmeal as well as many other flowers and mixtures to stores all across the country. Like his father, Paul II, who owned the mill before him, he enjoys the process of making wholesome, nutrient-rich flowers. Stone grinding keeps intact all the nutritional qualities of the grain that you start with. Um, it, unlike the steel roller mills uh, and the modern milling that you find today, which is a process uh, that, that strips down the product bit by bit, and then they reconstitute it to make a whole grain. The grinding process is actually quite simple, and it's all about the stones. Kenyans are made of 150-year-old granite and weigh more than 2,000 pounds apiece. The bottom stone is called the nether stone, and the top is called the runner. We get the grain in, and we dump it into our hoppers. It comes down into the mill, um, where it's stopped up by a piece called a shoe. The shoe actually allows us to adjust the feed of grain into the mill. It's agitated by a wooden spindle, which is called a damsel and that taps it a little bit so that it'll fall a little bit at a time into the mill. We only have two adjustments. It's the rate of feed of the grain into the stone and also the aperture, the space between the two stones. Uh, we have a tenoring wheel that allows us to raise and lower the top stone. That allows us to adjust the grind so that we can make it more coarse or a little bit finer. After the grain has passed through the two sets of stones, it jets out the side where it falls out a little chute. And we collect it out in barrels where it can be packaged straight away or put into other products in mixes and blends and so forth. Over time, the grinding process wears down the granite, so every few months, the stones need to be sharpened. We have to take the, the, all the wooden work off the top. We take the yoke, which is a big arch-shaped unit, and place it over the stone. We raise that top stone up and swing it out of the way. 
we flip it over and bring it back so that we can expose the grinding surface of the stone. Perfect. What we do at that point is we have to use uh, various tools and we sharpen uh, or peck the stone. Now that the easy part of the job has been done, moving the stone and flipping it over, I get down to the real work. Now, years ago, they used to use these steel rods. They would be sharpened and then heat treated and forged and a bundle tied together, and they would beat on the face of the stone to get it roughened. But that was a lot of work, and the Yankees uh, are notoriously lazy. They call it Yankee ingenuity, but it's just because of laziness. He came up with this multi-bladed hammer called a mill pack, and the proper use of it was to raise the hammer and let it go, and it would leave a series of little grooves. Furrows or channels are what carry the ground corn out from between the stones. They also allow air to circulate. Grist mills have influenced more than just the grains we eat. A lot of phrases in the English language come from the grist mills, uh, the most famous of which is keep your nose to the grindstone. And that went, uh, you miller kept his nose smelling to make sure that the stones are not hitting. Uh, once they st start to hit, they spark and it can cause an explosion which will uh, many times ruin the mill uh, and sometimes the miller was killed. Fortunately, every miller at Kenyon's has always kept his nose to the grindstone. And Paul III is happy to be here carrying on an old world technique. Next, we'll show you a traditional Rhode Island recipe made with one of Kenyon's most popular products. A friend of the Drum family has been making traditional corn cakes called Johnny Cakes since he was a small boy. He shared his recipe with us. It's made from white stone ground flint corn. I have a cup of meal in here. I'm going to add a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. To this, Richard adds about a cup of boiling water. This needs to sit a little while. It's going to taste better the meal will absorb the moisture. Now, time to use the griddle. A little oil. This is a Teflon coated surface. Don't use a cast aluminum griddle or you'll never get the Johnny Cake off. Even though it's Teflon, I like to oil the griddle a little bit. You get a better crust on the uh, outside of that Johnny Cake. The ideal Johnny Cake, as far as I'm concerned, has a nice crust on either side, but it's still a little bit soft on the inside. Now I'm cooking at around 380 degrees. Let me put one on first with the larger spoon. Now that's all right if you're gonna serve them at home and, and everybody's gonna eat them for breakfast. But most of the time, you're going to serve them to friends, or you're going to have them at uh, an afternoon. Use the iced teaspoon, and it makes a, a, a wonderful size. Now, they stay on there until they're brown around the edges. This is a drying out process rather than a cooking process. When I added the boiling water to the meal, it's a scalded meal, so that's edible. This is drying out to make that cake travelable. And that's when the colonists took the cornmeal mush, dried it out on the griddles that they brought from Europe, and made it travelable. They carry these in a leather pouch, and they took them on their journey. They pronounced it Jarney. And after a while, the R's got dropped, and Jarney cake became Johnny cake. At least that's the story that I have been told. I'm going to turn one over a little on the early side, just so you can start to see something underneath. There's a little mark on it, and that's from the drawing up of the spoon. When you paint a house and you leave a void, it's called a holiday. But on the underside of a Johnny cake, it's called a smile. And there usually is one on every Johnny cake. Richard tops the Johnny Cakes with a blend of whipped butter and maple syrup. Oh, I can't wait to taste these. They smell so good. 
They taste even better. And there's a particular way to eat a Johnny Cake when they're this small and this beautiful. Ready? Next step. And we always say, ah. Oh. And like I mentioned earlier, another real Rhode Island favorite is the clam cakes. Or sometimes referred to as clam fritters. And yes, Kenyon's has you covered when it comes to this mixture also. So Kenyon's makes a lot of different mixes, not just Johnny Cakes. And again, I will provide the links to order these down in the comments section and also in the description panel of today's video. So there we have it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this, the history, and all about Canyon's Grismel. Remember to sub up, ring that bell notification, and also leave a comment because we love to hear from you. And until the next time, you folks have yourself a fantastic day.